had a crazy idea, one that nobody believes but you, but you think you're right? Well, about 400 years ago, there was a guy named Galileo who lived near here, and he had this crazy idea. The Earth moves. He believed that it went around the sun, and so did all the other planets. Now, that idea wasn't very popular 400 years ago because back then, everybody believed that the stars and the planets went around us. After all, the Earth doesn't look like it moves. It sure seems... Pretty solid to me. You can understand why they'd feel that. But Galileo believed that the secret to understanding how the Earth moved was gravity. And there's a story that he came here to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He climbed up to the top and he threw cannonballs over the edge to understand how gravity works. Well, it's a nice story, but I don't think he really did it because throwing cannonballs off the top of that tower would not be very popular with the people down below. Okay, maybe he didn't throw things off the tower but he did throw objects of different sizes and weights off high places to try to solve a mystery. How does the Earth move around the sun? Back in Galileo's time, more than four centuries ago, most astronomers believed that the Earth didn't move at all. They thought that the Earth was at the center of the solar system, with the sun, moon, stars, and all the planets going around us. It's a nice idea, thinking we're so important, but it's wrong. The sun is at the center, and we go around it. And when you try to explain something that's wrong to begin with, it can get very complicated. This beautiful gold sphere is an old model of the universe that has the Earth at the center. And all these hoops and gears all move around in different directions, trying to explain the motion of the planets and the stars. And you can see that it gets really, really complicated when you assume that everything else moves except us. You can understand why people thought the Earth didn't move. The sun moves across the sky every day. The moon, stars, and planets pass overhead at night. It's almost as though we're inside a giant beach ball with the sky and the stars painted on the inside. Half the ball is blue with the sun and clouds on it. The other half is black with the night sky splattered across the inside. And this cosmic ball rolls around us every day while we sit still in the middle. Of course, the universe isn't a beach ball, but 500 years ago, models of our solar system show the Earth at the center and the planets going around us. Believing that we're sitting still causes problems when you try to watch how the planets seem to move among the stars. If you assume that the Earth is not moving, it becomes very difficult to explain how everything else in the night sky does move. It's sort of like driving a car. Right now, I know that I'm driving down the road and I'm passing by all this lovely scenery. But let's suppose that I'm not moving, that it's the ground that's passing by me. Well then, how come the ground that's close to the car is moving by really fast and those distant hills are moving slowly? How can solid ground do that? It doesn't make sense. So when you assume that you're not moving, the universe gets very confusing. Of course, we are moving along with the other planets and we're all moving around the sun at different speeds. So occasionally we pass another planet, like passing a car on the highway. Take Mars, for example. It's farther away from the sun than we are, so it takes longer to go around in its orbit. Every now and then, we pass Mars on the inside, which makes it look like Mars backs up in the sky for a while, then goes forward again. Jupiter and Saturn do the same thing, but not quite as much because they're farther away. That's why machines that tried to duplicate the motion of the planets with the Earth at the center got so complicated. They were trying to represent this strange motion with a model that had the Earth sitting still, which is wrong. Galileo believed the Earth did move. He wasn't the first to come up with this idea, but he was the first to prove it using a good scientific method. He knew the key to understanding how the Earth moved was gravity which brings us back to throwing things off high places. But he wondered, would gravity work the same way on something large like the Earth as it does on something small, like a piece of paper? 
400 years ago, people thought that gravity worked a little differently than the way we understand it today. Back in Galileo's time, they thought that gravity worked more on heavy objects and less on light objects. And you can understand why they believe that if you try this yourself. Take something heavy, like a big book or a binder, and something really light, like a piece of paper, and just hold them out in front of yourself like this, let them go at the same time, and watch what happens. Let's see that again in slow motion. Yep, a heavy object beats the light object to the ground every time. So was Galileo wrong? Well, not exactly. See, people thought that maybe gravity pulled more on heavy objects and less on light ones, but Galileo believed that gravity worked the same on all objects and that they should fall at the same rate. The reason they don't, he said, is because there's air here. The air is slowing the paper down because it's really light. The heavy book can push through the air more easily, so it falls faster. But if we could make the air go away, they would fall at the same speed. Well, I can sort of make the air go away by putting the paper on top of the book so the book pushes the air out of the way and the paper doesn't see it, watch what happens now. They do fall at the same speed. So Galileo was right. Well, unfortunately for Galileo, rockets hadn't been invented yet. So he couldn't go to the moon where there's no air to do this experiment. It took almost 400 years before an astronaut finally did it on the surface of the moon. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Imagine what Galileo would say if he could see this. Fortunately for the people of Pisa, Galileo changed his unpopular habit of dropping heavy objects off tall buildings to his laboratory, where he rolled balls down a ramp like this one. It was a way to study gravity without hitting anyone on the head. Can you see how the bells on this ramp are closer together at the top and farther apart at the bottom? That's because the ball speeds up as gravity pulls it down the ramp. The idea is to find the right position for the bells so they all ring at regular intervals. Using this simple equipment, he could see gravity at work. And he discovered that all objects are affected by gravity in the same way, regardless of how heavy they are. This simple understanding of gravity led him to believe that the same force pulling these balls down a ramp was pulling the Earth and all the other planets in orbit around the Sun. All he needed next was to prove this by seeing the same thing in space.